Hello guys, and welcome back to the Zane Investing. Discuss the effects of the AMC reverse split on the squeeze price and squeeze brackets. I'd like to discuss if the prior brackets that have been created are still reasonable, and I'd also like to dispel some urban legends surrounding the reverse split. Therefore, remain tuned, and let's earn some cash. And now I'd like to go right to the pertinent stuff. So Stephanie tweeted explaining why one is voting. Yes, yes, she stated, I know it's frightening. But not voting yes is more terrifying. In her estimation, with a vote of no, Schwartz can continue to drive down the price of APE because preferred stock APE does not have a share locate requirement. And then they can pursue AMC hard with a no vote. Adam Aaron would have to continue selling shares at or below 60 cents a share if the APE stock fell again. If he sought to seek funds for the AMC company, AMC would be weaker without the reverse split and conversion, and the shorts would be free to attack AMC with all their force. They would have made billions of dollars shorting AP. They can then fill additional AMC short slots with a vote of no, a vote of yes for the conversion, and a vote of no for the reverse split. There would be a substantial circulation of 1.5 billion AMC shares. The AMC stock would also be substantially cheaper as the float would increase from 500 million to 1.5 billion shares. AMC debt would not be repaid in full since it could not produce more funds. Through the use of APE, which has already been converted, the shorts might theoretically drive the price of AMC even lower. However, with a yes-yes float, the float decreases, and it is well known that tiny float stocks are historically more volatile. AMC would also be debt-free if it could create additional income in the future. The price of AMC stock would be considerably higher if the company's debts were paid off. I cannot concur with the notion that a reverse split on AMC would be detrimental to the squeeze potential. Further, James tweeted that 10 AMC shares will be converted to one AMC share. A portion of his shares were acquired for $56 per share. The cost of 10 shares for him at that time was $560. However, the price of a single AMC share is currently $1. The price per share is $4, and 10 of his present shares are worth only $40. In chess him. So after the reverse split, or in the future, when his AMC share reaches $560, he will break even. Compared to the current all-time high of $72 per share, $560 is enormous. First, you must remember that a reverse split occurs all the time. High will also be made significantly larger. And I believe it is crucial to consider the actual squeezing mechanics. Market capitalization based. What I'm saying is that share price does not determine the value of a firm or its squeeze potential. As an illustration, the end of your stock has a share price of about $5,000 per share. But the true value of the company is significantly more. Is relatively modest, amounting to $14 billion. I believe that many of you believe that. With a share price of approximately $5,000 per share, and VR is 10 or 20 times the size of Apple, 10 to 20 times the size of Amazon, 10 to 20 times the size of Microsoft, and numerous other comparable corporations. In actuality, however, VR is a relatively small company with a market valuation of only $14 billion, which is incomparable to Apple's total value of $2 trillion, even though Apple's share price is only $130. It does not imply that the company is little, especially when compared to a stock worth $5,000 that has a considerably smaller market capitalization. Therefore, what I'm saying is that the AMC squeeze should be calculated based on the company's overall market capitalization, not a specific share price. For instance, if we ignore the synthetic shares and APE shares, AMC has 513 million shares available for trading. If AMC stock price reaches a peak of $1,000 per share, and only a handful of fortunate apes actually sell their shares for $1,000, the company's market capitalization would reach $513 billion. If you are one of the fortunate few and are able to sell 10 shares at $1,000 a share, you will earn $10,000 in total. This indicates that AMC is compressing its share price to $10,000. Obviously, if you are one of the fortunate few who sells 10 shares at $10,000 each, you will earn a stunning $100,000. However, what occurs following the 10 for 1 reverse split? Remember, for the purposes of this example, I'm ignoring those. I disregard synthetics and the 8 shares as well. 
Clearly, following a reverse split of 10 for 1, there are 513 million shares. Only 513 million shares are issued. If AMC float of 513 million shares is reduced to $1,000 per share, the company's float will have shrunk. That is not a $513 billion market capitalization. That only amounts to $51.3 billion. Capitalization of $51.3 billion. AMC market capitalization would not even place it in the top 100, let alone the top 10, let alone as the largest firm. If AMC only reaches $51 billion, I wouldn't even consider that the mother of all short squeezes because it wouldn't be larger than the Volkswagen squeeze and the largest corporation, the marketplace. Therefore, if, if you believe that AMC with 513 million shares may achieve $1,000 per share, you believe in a $513 billion market cap of $513 billion market cap after the reverse split, which means you believe in AMC at $10,000 per share immediately. If you believe that AMC can achieve $1,000 per share with 513 million shares, then you must also believe that AMC can reach $10,000 per share following the reverse split because 1,000 AMC now is identical to a 10,000 AMC following the reverse split as the market capitalization has not changed at all. They must acquire tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions, of AMC shares. And I believe, particularly in light of how the present market meltdown is proceeding, that he could soon enjoy its next run-up, forcing these market makers to hedge their calls. The permission letter he claimed that according to a tweet, this year has seen the most tech layoffs since 2001, the worst collapse in tech equities since 2001, a war, the most aggressive Fed policies ever into a recession, and the loss of $2.5 trillion in crypto. According to him, the year-to-date performance of many of these technology equities has been abysmal, falling 70, 60, 50, and 40 percent. Yet the S and P500 is only down 20%, so Apple may actually be holding up. Increase the total market. Apple is certainly a substantial component of the S and P500, and so far, this trend has continued. This year, Apple's decline is only 29%, a pretty minor decline. Compared to 50 and 60% declines, this decline is 60%. As a result, Ryan Cohen tweeted, the Apple doesn't fall far from the tree essentially stating that when Apple falls, everything else will follow suit. They've also posted a chart depicting Apple's recent decline below its 52-week low. Apple has almost no further resistance on its way down, maybe below $50. If Apple were to decline by an additional 66%, the S&P 500 would fall even more. And certainly, when the S&P 500 index crashes, a tremendous wave of liquidations will occur clearly causing AMC to rise again. This prompted market makers to hedge for AM calls in the money, resulting in the squeeze. But do let me know what you think in the comments section below. As always, gentlemen, be remember to ring the notification bell so that you will be notified when I upload a new video. Cheers!